Welcome back ladies and gents, before I start my video tutorial, have a look at the corner over there, there's a red subscribe button, make sure you tap it and subscribe to my channel for juicy A-level maths content. Now, in this video tutorial, I'll be looking at 7.5 simplifying A sine X plus or minus B cos X or A cos X plus or minus B sine X. Now 7.5 represents chapter 7, section 5 of the Pearson A-level maths, pure maths year 2 textbook. Right. I'm going to be introducing this particular juicy concept by writing two trigonometric expressions. The very first trigonometric expression is a sine x plus or minus b cos x. The next trigonometric expression that I'm going to write is a cos x plus or minus b sine x. Now the first trigonometric expression can be expressed of the form r sine, the reason why it's r sine, because the first term is sine, in brackets, x plus or minus alpha. The second trigonometric expression, this one over here, can be expressed of the form r cos, the reason why it's cos, because the first term is cos, in bracket, x minus plus alpha, very important, okay? So what that means is that the plus over here becomes a minus and the minus over here becomes a plus. Now alpha is between 0 and 90 degrees which is equivalent to pi over 2 radians. R is calculated by taking the square root a squared plus b squared. Okay let's have some thoughts about why we would express these trigonometric expressions in these particular form. Right. Suppose in the exam I told you to sketch y equal 2 sine x plus 4 cos x. Now sketching y equal 2 sine x plus 4 cos x is challenging. If I can take y equal 2 sine x plus 4 cos x and express it in this particular form, then the graph is easy to sketch. It is just the sine graph, okay, with some transformations applied. So the first reason for expressing these trigonometric expression in this particular form over here is that you can easily sketch the graph. Right, let's think of another reason for why it might be useful to express these trigs over here in this particular form. Well, if I take the first statement, this one over here, and look at the left hand side, suppose I want to work out the maximum and minimum of this trig. It's not clear what the maximum and minimum is. However, if I express this trig in this particular form, it is extremely clear what the maximum and minimum is. Well, the maximum will be r and the minimum will be minus r. So the second reason for why it's useful to express these trigonometric expressions in this particular form is that you can easily find the maximum and minimum value. Okay, one more reason. Let's think of another reason now. Right, let me take the second statement for example, yeah? If you look at the left hand side over here, suppose I've got a trig of this form equal to maybe 1 over 7. Now solving that equation is a little bit more challenging compared to solving this trig over here equal to 1 over 7. So the third reason for expressing these trigs in this particular form is, well, we can easily solve trigonometric equations. Let's have a look at some exam questions. So question number one says express cos 2 theta minus 2 sine 2 theta in the form r cos in bracket 2 theta plus alpha, where r is greater than 0 and alpha is between 0 and pi over 2. Give the value of alpha to three decimal places. Now the very first step is to make cos 2 theta minus 2 sine 2 theta equal to r cos in bracket 2 theta plus alpha. Now 
The next step is to expand this cos over here using the addition formula for cos a plus b. So if I do that, I obtain the following. If I look at the left hand side, the first term is proportional to cos 2 theta and the second term is proportional to sine 2 theta. Whereas if I look at the right hand side, what I can do with the first term is rewrite it so that it looks more proportional to cos 2 theta and the same way what I can do is rewrite the second term so it looks more proportional to sine 2 theta. So this first term over here what I can do is swap the cos 2 theta and cos alpha so I get r cos alpha cos 2 theta minus over here I can swap the sine 2 theta and sine alpha I get r sine alpha sine 2 theta now if I go back to my left hand side the cos 2 theta can be written as 1 cos 2 theta okay now what I'm going to be doing is drawing some beautiful rectangles so over here I can draw a rectangle around r cos alpha and over here I can draw a rectangle around r sine alpha in the same way on the left hand side I'm going to draw a rectangle around 1 and a rectangle around 2. Okay, so what I can do is compare both sides of the equation. And if I compare both sides, I can generate two equations. The first equation is r sine alpha. Okay, r sine alpha is equal to 2. The second equation is r cos alpha is equal to 1. So equation 1, equation 2. Now, I want to work out alpha. To work out alpha, I can do equation 1 divided by equation 2. So I get r sine alpha over r cos alpha equal 2 over 1. Now the r's cancel. I have sine alpha over cos alpha, which is just tan alpha. So tan alpha is equal to 2. Right, so all I need to now do is use my calculator, calculate tan inverse of 2, making sure my calculator is on radian mode, and then round my answer to three decimal places. So alpha is equal to 1.107 to 3 dp. To work out R, all I need to do is take square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared. So r is equal to square root 5. Let's have a look at question 2 now. Part A, it says express 9 cos theta plus 40 sine theta in the form r cos in bracket theta minus alpha, where r is greater than 0 and alpha is between 0 and 90 degrees. Give the value of alpha to three decimal places. So like we did before, we need to first start off by writing 9 cos theta plus 40 sine theta is equal to r cos in bracket theta minus alpha. Okay, so now I need to use the addition formula for cos a plus b to expand this cos over here. So if I do that, I obtain the following. So... If I look at the left hand side, the first term is proportional to cos theta, the second term is proportional to sine theta. In the right hand side, I can rewrite the first term so it looks more proportional to cos theta, and I can rewrite the second term so it looks more proportional to sine theta. So over here for the first term, I can swap over the cos theta and the cos alpha. Second term, I can swap over the sine theta and sine alpha. And if I do this, I obtain r cos alpha cos theta plus r sine alpha sine theta now i can start drawing my rectangles so on the left hand side i can draw a rectangle around 9 on the right hand side i can draw a rectangle around r cos alpha on the left hand side i can draw a rectangle around 40 on the right hand side i can draw a rectangle around r sine alpha by doing this i can compare both sides of the equation and generate two equations okay so the first equation that i can generate is r sine alpha equal to 40 so, r sine alpha equal 40. That's equation 1. The second equation is r cos alpha equal to 9. Now, if I take equation 1 and divide by equation 2, I obtain r sine alpha 
divide by r cos alpha equal 40 divide by 9. The r's cancel, sine alpha over cos alpha is tan alpha, so tan alpha is equal 40 over 9. Now all I need to do is use my calculator to find alpha. So I take the tan inverse of 40 over 9, so if I do that now, shift tan 40 over 9, making sure my calculator is on degree mode. I obtain 77.320 to three decimal places. Now if I want to work out R, all I need to do is take square root of 9 squared plus 40 squared. So R is equal to 41. For part B it says G theta is equal 18 over 50 plus 9 cos theta plus 40 sine theta. Calculate the minimum value of g theta. Now, if we're working out the minimum of a fraction, we need to make the denominator large. I can see that 9 cos theta plus 40 sine theta can be replaced with r cos theta minus alpha, where r is 41 and alpha is 77.320. Now, I want to minimize g theta, so what I need to do is make the denominator large. I can set the cos in bracket theta minus 77.320 degrees equal to 1. So the minimum value of g theta is just 18 over 91. For part 2, what we need to do is calculate the smallest positive value of theta at which the minimum occurs. Well, the minimum occurs by setting cos in bracket theta minus 77.320 degrees equal to 1. So, I would like you all to solve this particular trigonometric equation and work out the smallest positive value of theta for which g theta will be a minimum. Okay guys, right, so you should all obtain theta equal to minus 282.68 degrees. 77.320 degrees or 437.32 degrees. The smallest positive value of theta for which g of theta is a minimum will just be 77.320 degrees to three decimal places.